Alright kiddos, if you're watching this tutorial, that means you want to do the grayscale portrait using pencil. Um, this side I did using the vine charcoal. I just thought I would use one portrait for two tutorials, uh, just so I don't waste so much paper. So I'm going to get a little zoomed in and I'm going to start uh, drawing the face using just a 2B pencil. I think I'm going to do most of it just using a 2B, which is the medium pencils, um, if you're using them off of my art cart. Uh, and they're also just regular yellow pencils. I might go in a little bit with an ebony pencil as well. Those are the darkest pencils. But I will have to wait and see how I like it with this pencil. I'm also going to need to make sure it's sharpened. And I'm going to grab a couple erasers. I have this one, and then I have this one just for precision. I don't have these on my art cart, so um, if you don't have one of those, like you probably don't because you're using the stuff off my art cart, then you're going to want to use a kneadable eraser. Alright, so here's my good kneadable eraser. I just use vine charcoal with this, which means there's probably a little bit on it. So to clean it, you just kind of knead it a little bit meaning you just squish it around, stretch it out, stretch it back. There, that looks pretty cool. I'm also going to use a little bit of toilet paper or um, tissue paper works just fine. Oh, and then a blending stump. So, um, let me grab one. A blending stump are these little things for blending. Okay, let's begin. So I am going to start Hold on, let me get a different color paper underneath. There. That's better. Okay, so I'm going to start by doing the darkest areas of the face. So, um, the darkest areas are going to be the areas that are kind of in shadow. They're also going to be the lowest points of the face. So, right underneath your cheekbone, you probably have a bit of a darker area where it is um, a little bit more hollow because the highest area is the cheekbone here. So anywhere where there's a high point, so I'll just kind of outline that, that's the high point, There's, it's going to cast a bit of a shadow. So I'm just getting a little bit of a shade in the part that should be cast in shadow. Okay. So another high point would be the jawline. The jaw is coming out in space, meaning there is going to be a shadow cast right underneath the jaw. Let's see if you can see this. Yep. Where the head is kind of creating a shadow. This is probably going to be the darkest shadow on the face. So I'm just going to put a good amount of graphite down. If you have darker skin tone than me, then all you would do for any of these portraits is you would just apply more pressure and make um, darker shades. Okay, I'm just going to separate this a little bit better. So we have the darker, more hollow area of the cheekbone. Another dark area will be the crease in the eye or the eyelid. If you have hooded eyelids, you might not have this showing. So in that case, you would make the darkest area right along the top of the eye. However, I've got quite a bit of eyelid showing, so I'm going to just make that dark line. And then I'm going to start lighting it lightening it as it goes out because another high point on the face would be the brow bone or right underneath the eyebrow where a bone kind of protrudes out. Okay, we're going to have a bit of darkness around our nose contour. Now my nose kind of has this dark point. It kind of comes to a point right here. That's just the nature of how my nose looks. I guess everyone is different so your nose might not do that like mine does. And then I have a pretty dark inner corner of my eye. 
where I kind of have that nose contour as well. Alright. So I'm starting with the darker areas. Let's see, then we've got a darker area around the top of the forehead because our hair is probably casting a bit of a shadow, whether your hair is short or long. If you have a buzz cut, you might not have this as much. However, um, your forehead still comes out into space, so that means it's going to be lightest in the middle, and it'll get darkest around the edges. So it's kind of going to fade from dark to light as it goes towards the middle. All right, let's see then, let's darken it a little bit more around the nose. The bridge of the nose is going to be another high point. It is the highest up on the face, typically, the bridge of that nose. And then the tip of the nose is actually the highest point, I think, on most people. Everyone's different. Let's see, this part is called the nair. It's a little crease around your nostril, so that's going to be kind of dark since it is a crease. Okay, then I'm just going to kind of define the bottom of the nose a bit. Now the nose, it's highest right here in the middle. I'll kind of circle that. So then it's going to cast a shadow right underneath that high point like this. Then we have our Cupid's bow, so it's going to have a bit of a shadow right on the inside there, and then on the other side of the little thing that comes forward. I don't really know what else to call it. It's just a little wrinkle thing. Alright. Now this part is kind of a more flat area, so I'm just going to kind of Put a medium tone in there. I'm going to kind of start to lighten up that shadow in the cheekbone area, moving towards the apples of the cheek or the high points of the cheek. I know it looks kind of funny now, but we're going to use tissue paper to, or not tissue paper, tissue, like toilet tissue or regular tissue to blend. So don't worry about how funny it looks now. And then my forehead has a little bit of a dent kind of in the middle, so I'm just going to make that a little bit darker. You can kind of see it on the other side the vine charcoal side. Okay, then we have a highlight here. Alright, and then right underneath the lips you're going to have a bit of a shadow because the lips are protruding out and they are casting a shadow onto your chin. Now my chin kind of has shadows on either side of it. You can see it's dark over here. I'm just going to darken that up a bit. I know this is with vine charcoal, but I'm just fixing it up a bit. All right, and then I'm going to darken it on the sides, kind of outlining the chin area. Redefine that jaw shadow. And then my chin, I have a bit of a cleft chin. So I'm going to make it a little bit dark in the middle because it dents in just a little bit. All right. Almost ready to blend. This part's going to be a little bit dark where the lips are. I'm going to just define that inner lip line just a bit. Alright, now I think I'm ready to actually let me add a little bit of an outline here to that mandible. The bottom parts of your jaw are called the mandibles. 
in case you were wondering. Alright, so now I'm pretty happy with where my darks and lights are, so I'm going to use some tissue and just blend it a little bit. Alright, so you will see we kind of lost some of the highlights because it kind of all blended together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my kneadable eraser and just kind of sketch out the highlights with the eraser. So you're going to have a really light part on the inner corner of your eye like that. Then I can see for my face I have a bit of a highlight coming down on either side of my nose contour. Now I lost a little bit of my nose contour there, so I'm just going to redefine it. Okay, I'm going to darken up the areas where I lost a little bit of definition. Okay, I'm going to redefine the bridge of my nose, where it is the lightest. And then the tip of my nose too, where it's protruding out the most. I'm doing it on the other side just because I can tell that they're kind of blending together. I don't want them to look like one portrait still. Alright. So I found my bridge of my nose again. I'm going to redefine a few areas that might have got lost in the blending. Like so, maybe use my blending stump for a little bit more subtle blending. You can have a little bit more control with your blending when you use the blending stump, whereas the tissue paper is more for like larger areas, so more like for the beginning stages. Alright, I can see I kind of lost my brow bone highlight. Now I haven't drawn my eyebrow on, so it looks a little funny, so I'm just going to quickly kind of draw my eyebrow on. Now the way I'm drawing my eyebrow is just little strokes to make hair like pieces. Now your eyebrows are kind of going to go upright at the beginning and then if you notice they probably start to lay down a little bit more as they go towards the middle and then the very ends they kind of just lay pretty flat like this. But it's going to look the most natural if you just do short little strokes to kind of look like those little hairs. Okay, I'm just going to blend that a little bit. Now that looks pretty good. Alright, so I'm going to redefine underneath the eyebrow where the bone kind of protrudes out. You can also use your finger for a bit of blending if you want, if you're not afraid to get a little dirty. Okay, I have a pretty dark inner corner where my nose contour kind of starts and then I kind of like to accentuate that little point because I think that's just a unique feature I have where it kind of has shadows going inward kind of like a point. Alright, I'm going to erase the very highest points on my cheeks which are over here. Yours might be in the center, you just have to examine yourself in the mirror. You can also just do little taps with your eraser to take off some of the graphite but not all of it if you want a more subtle appearance. I'm going to darken up that cheekbone. I almost lost my ear completely, so I'm going to draw my ear. Actually, I don't think my ear is going to be covered by a little bit of hair. So I think I'm going to do that right now. Let's see. Probably be something like this. So you're just going to see the bottom part of my ear. Redefine my head shape. You just want very subtle gradients. So gradient means moving from dark to light very gradually. So it's no, there's no harsh lines. It's all just smoothly transitioning 
from one value to the other. When you're working with the grayscale, you're only really working with values because you're not applying any color to your piece. It's just lights and darks you're focusing on. Okay. Then for my eyelid, I know that my eyelid is going to be darkest on each corner, so the outside corner is going to be dark. And then a little bit on the inner corner like this. However, on the other side of that shadow, there's going to be that little light area. Okay, then you're going to have the lightest area right in the middle because it's rounded, it comes outward. So it's going to be lightest right in the middle. So I'm just going to erase a little bit right there in the middle. Okay. I'm going to accentuate the highlight on the middle of my forehead by just tapping off some of the graphite. Oops, you guys couldn't even see that. All right. So that's what I mean by the little divot in the middle. You see how it's very subtly a little bit darker right in the middle here. That's just the way my forehead is. All right, then I'm going to redefine my hairline. Okay. Now let's go to the eye. I'm going to zoom in. So for the eye, I'm going to outline it first. I'm going to make sure my pencil is nice and sharp before I all right, so I'm gonna outline. From the rest of the eye, then I'm just gonna kind of give a light shadow around the tear duct. It's a little bit darker in there. I'm gonna outline the iris. I'm gonna outline about half of the pupil and then I'm going to make the pupil kind of come in a little bit because I'm going to put a shine mark that goes through both the iris and the pupil and I'm going to erase the little marks I made for the rest of the pupil and I'm going to outline the shape that I want the shine mark to be so I'm going to make it kind of like that it's going to look most natural and lifelike if you have it going bo through both the pupil and the iris. Right, I'm going to darken up the top. I'll do that later. Okay, I'm going to redefine the eyelid area. Really make it deep in the crease. Then the top part of the iris I make a little bit darker because the top um, part of the eye or the eyelashes are casting a shadow onto the iris, okay? Now around the sides of the iris is also going to be a bit darker. And then I have light eyes so I'm actually going to fade this to a pretty light shade. If you have dark eyes you might have to keep it a little bit on the dark side. I'm going to blend, blend, blend. Now that looks more like a brown eye. And I have blue eyes or gray eyes. So I'm just going to take my kneadable, make it really teeny tiny, and gently erase a little bit of the lower portion of the eye. To let the viewer know it's a light colored eye. Even though I'm not adding color to it, you still want the value to be right, so I know that my light blue eyes would not make that deep of a value in a black and white scale or gray 
grayscale. So now that you kind of get the, oops, now that you kind of get the main idea, I'm going to continue to draw, maybe speed it up a little, and you can continue watching to kind of see where I put my darks and lights and how I am blending. Okay, so the thing about the lips is the top lip is going to be darker than the lower lip. And then when you're done, you're also going to want to redefine that Cupid's bow area. So I can show you how to do both those things. Now the lips are going to be darkest around the outside corners because that's where they are going down the lowest. Okay, I'm just going to outline it so I can find my lip again. And then it's going to get a little bit lighter in the middle here. Now remember, the top lip is going to be darker than the lower lip but it will still have a little bit of lighter areas as well right, so i want it to match that other side even though that was with a different material so i'm just going to lighten it up a little bit in the middle that looks good all right and for the lower lip Just going to have a very light shade on the outside, maybe a little bit of a shadow from the upper lip cast down there. And then keep it really nice and light right in the center where it's coming out the most. Okay. Now I kind of just have a medium gray tone for all the space above the lip, so what I'm going to do is take my kneadable and kind of outline where that cupid's bow comes up. So that'll be along the top lip, sort of, just like you see on the other side. Kind of lost some of it on the other side. And even down this side a little bit too. And if you really want to define keep it bow you could just make it a little bit darker around either side of the light point because anywhere there's light it's going to cast a bit of a shadow on the opposite side okay. 